Yuha Bart is the final villain of the Bleach series, and that's of course if you're not counting the Helarch where Xylopro returned, but to keep this on topic, Yuha Bart single-handedly made his mark within the Thousand Year Blood War arc and set himself in stone as an absolute merciless monster, and ironically, much like how the old Soul Society used to be a thousand years ago. But why are we talking about the Quincy King today? Well, the question I pose to you today is, is Yuha Bart dead? The short answer is no. He is not. While this may turn a few heads, today's video I'll elaborate on this interesting theory I have about Yuha and his potential to come back within the Bleach series. So make sure to hit that like, subscribe, hit a comment and of course tick all that bell notification to keep up with all the latest news, discussions and theory videos. So let's get into it. Besides the obvious comments that I'm going to get, of course I'm aware of the light novels. After the Thousand Year Blood War arc, going into Can't Free Your Own World, Yuar had replaced the Soul King. Well, more specifically, his spiritual energy has. Because, as confusing as this was, it is the same as with the original Rayo. Though his body is supposedly assumed dead, his body as in fact is a vessel. But, his spiritual energy lasted, thus being able to hold the worlds together. Even one hand of Mimihagi was able to keep the balance of the worlds. Or maybe just the arm was just reconnecting that said vessel. But the point is, even though Rayo as a vessel was pronounced dead, his spiritual energy wasn't, or at the very least, put in a frozen type stasis. I think you may understand where I'm going with this. But first of all, let me explain why I think Yuha might still be around, which can be down to a random thought that I had about Uryu, and whether he still has his bestowed script and potentially what that would mean for Yuha himself. So as I said, I had this random thought about Uryu Ishida and if he still held the antithesis ability. This somehow spiraled and I came to the conclusion that he does because Uryu obtained this ability through Yuha through drinking his blood. Now thankfully, this isn't my only lead to this conclusion as I understand this example can be easily debunked. Yuha does in fact say that Uryu has a hidden ability that with his help can be awakened. Now this can be indicated that his blood is a trigger for this ability to be accessible, but I think there might be something more to this. While Yuha didn't have the almighty ability awoken at this point, I assume Yuha was theorizing or avoiding putting all of his eggs in one basket, as I found it interesting he bestowed Uryu the same letter that he himself had, being the letter A. Was this maybe a setup just in case Yuha himself died? Well, we'll get into this, but first let's talk about the other alternatives. As we know from one of the biggest foreshadowings or biggest revelations in Bleach, Ichigo Kurosaki, one of our main characters, has connections to Zangetsu, known as of course Yuha Ba, or at least a very small part of him that grew to have his own sentient personality or consciousness. We learn throughout the series, old man Zangetsu, as we will call him, had helped Ichigo throughout his training, guide him and even restrict him of his abilities. But over time, Zangetsu learned to create a bond and was swayed by Ichigo. Why this is relevant is because whether Ichigo likes it or not, Zangetsu and Yuha are connected. Yuha was able to watch Ichigo and know much more about him than maybe even Aizen. This could also be a little bit of a double-edged sword, no pun intended, because this could explain why Yuha was so fearful about Ichigo's true bond. Bankai. While this connection exists, Yuha will always coexist. In this case, in a good way, as Zangetsu is seen as the good version of Yuha. Much like, let's just say, Fat Boo is to Majin Boo, if you take that as an example. But then we have Kazui our little bundle of wholesomeness that could, may or may not destroy the worlds with a single summoning portal. That being said, and without theorizing on Kazui's abilities as I would like to leave that for another time, so make sure to subscribe, I feel Kazui, much like Majin Buu, as an example may have parts of Yuha within him. I mean, he is a Quincy in the same way that Ichigo is by virtue of being Masaki's descendant, and moreover, he even shares the same tenses on Getsu Hilt Ichigo did within his fake Bankai mode. As we know from some Soul Reapers, some power powers are in fact hereditary, more so it would seem within the royal families. Again, a topic for another day. The reason I brought this up, considering Kazuri's immaturity and innocence, it should be easy to manipulate a kid like him. We don't truly know what happened to Yuha's Reishi in the last chapter. Did Kazuri destroy it because he had the same Reishi as Yuha? Did he simply absorb it? Who knows? But I find it interesting that when you look at the Quincy portal and the Shinigami portal, Kazuri opens up a hell portal. Could these two Reishis together, untrained, create a casual portal to hell? That is the question. Who knows? But I find it interesting that Yuha's powers are kind of scattered everywhere within the different worlds. It's clear to us, the audience, that not only does he hold the worlds together as the Soul King's replacement, he also potentially resides within Uryu, 
resides within Ichigo to some sort, and highly possible to reside in Kazui too. We have yet to mention that parts of Yuha's Reisha are hidden within the shadows of the Soul Society, only to release 10 years later. But why 10 years? What was the purpose of that sudden outburst? What was Yuha going to do at this point? Fight Soul Reapers as pure energy? As long as these three to four factors are in place, Yuha isn't dead in nature and realistically could come back at literally any time, maybe in another thousand years. I mean, he did survive or escape Yamamoto a thousand years ago. Was this the same technique that he used back then too? But let's hand it over to DBZ Imran and see what he thinks about this. If we take what we learn about the current state of Yuhobak from the Can't Be Your Own World light novels, and we apply some of the facts that we know about the original Soul King, then I think that it can really help us to understand whether if Yuha is in fact alive or not. Now, as James had mentioned earlier on in the video, Yuha has now replaced the Soul King, with his body being transformed by the Royal Guard into the new powerless linchpin of reality. When Yuhobak had absorbed the Soul King during the Thousand Year Blood War, arc, he was effectively functioning as the new Soul King. But the difference was that he was sentient, powerful, and he was able to shape reality into his image. Ichibei's sinister plot to transform Ichigo into the next Soul King was also revealed early on in the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels. Ichibei had come to this decision after realizing that there was no way to defeat the enemy, and he had allowed Ichigo to charge towards Yuhobak knowing full well that he didn't stand a chance against him. It is assumed that after Ichigo's defeat, Ichibei would have transformed him into the new Soul King. The leader of the Quincy was well aware of Ichibei's twisted plan, and he had wanted to actually end Ichigo's life before he would be forced to endure a fate worse than death. In some way, he had actually saved Ichigo's life by absorbing the Soul King, and thus making it easier for the Royal Guard to just use Yuhobak's body as a replacement, if Ichigo and the others were in fact able to defeat him. In an ironic way, Yuhobak's relationship to Ichigo mirrors his bond with Olman Zangetsu. Now, while Olman Zangetsu who had halted Ichigo's progression because of being overly protective, Yuobak on the other hand had saved Ichigo's life by absorbing the Soul King and thus making himself a viable candidate to fill the role of Soul King instead of Ichigo. He also had expressed enough consideration for Ichigo that he did not want him to fall victim to Ichibei's plan. The light novels also revealed that the original Soul King didn't fight back against the noble families when they had plotted to mutilate his body and to transform him into a powerless god. Some fans have speculated that he was aware of the future and he had accepted what was going to happen to him as a necessary evil, that he needed to become a linchpin in order to bring a balance into the world. After Yuhobak was cut in half by Ichigo at the end of the manga, it had seemed like he was in fact dead, but the royal guard were able to take his body, which had contained the essence of the Soul King, and they had transformed him into the new Soul King. Now, I theorize that much like his father, the old Soul King, Yuhobak must be trapped in a state where he is between life and death. The other characters Characters do refer to his body as a corpse, but it is an accurate description because he may as well be dead, because life as a powerless linchpin is in fact a fate worse than death. Yuha is now an undead corpse destined to remain stagnant, much like the original primordial world of Bleach before the noble families had ambushed the Soul King. Now, Yuhobak, in my opinion, is neither fully dead or fully alive, but that's just my opinion on the matter. Now, I'll hand it back over to James so that he can give you his final thoughts on the state of Yuhobak. I don't want to put any absolutes or say with certainty that this is the case as unless Kubo himself tells us or we see more content in the future relating to this idea, we will never really truly know. But I think it's very interesting to know that the last ride of the Quincy's is not quite over yet and what that means for the greater Bleach universe as a whole. If Yuha did come back, what form could it possibly be in? Perhaps it could be similar to Kage from Naruto in the sense that he forms a body from another individual such as those we listed before or even someone new providing Kubo does want to make another story, or he could reawaken his memories in his incarnation that potentially has been passed on to Kazui to some degree, or will his remnant Rieishi play a part within that process? Are all of these pieces just parts of another plan that Yuha put into motion? But what about you guys as the viewer? Do you have any thoughts regarding this idea? Because I'd love to hear them in the comment section down below. If there was a greater purpose to giving Uryu the same letter A, then is he being nurtured as the second vessel for Yuha without Uryu's knowledge? As far as we know, Uryu doesn't have a method to extract Quincy blood from himself and even if he did would he even do so considering his pride with his Quincy heritage but again I'll leave those thoughts to you guys so tell me what you guys think with that being said I'm gonna catch you guys like you guys of course have this fine day been handsome and as always people peace out